morning. Uh, as you know, yesterday this department uh, distributed a press release regarding the arrest of two subjects involved in a homicide from October of uh, 2020. As a result of those arrests, we're aware that there's been a lot of discussion, questions, and uh, speculation uh, regarding its circumstance. So our goal here today is to try to clear some of that up and answer any questions you may have that, uh, that have le been left unanswered uh, at this point. So a quick summary of the case, on October 30th of 2020 at approximately 9.30 a.m., a premeditated shooting occurred in the driveway of a residence located on the 1600 block of Eleanor Drive in our city. 30-year-old Ueda Jr. Muasika was shot execution style 14 times. He died at the scene while putting his two-year-old son into his vehicle to take him to school. The young boy suffered a single gunshot wound to his face and has since recovered from that injury. After an 18-month investigation spanning multiple states, we are pleased to announce the arrest of two suspects responsible for this attack. Not only were these were these suspects lying in wait to commit this murder, they appeared to carry it out without any concern for public safety, our city, or any children present. Yesterday, with the, assistant, the assistance of the Charlotte Mecklenburg Police Department in North Carolina and the Honolulu FBI Division in Hawaii, both suspects, John Talia Posse, and Isaleli Mahi were arrested for the murder of Ueda Muasika. Mr. Posse was arrested in North Carolina and Mr. Mahi was arrested in Hawaii. They are both currently awaiting extradition back to our county. This attack was personal and targeted. We believe it to be related to the murder of Susan Tonga from a case in 2019 where she died in a fire that was deliberately set. Passy, Mr. Passy and the victim have known each other for over 15 years. Uh, Mr. Passy does have a criminal history and a, currently pending a, a firearm case out of Sacramento from an incident that took place just two months after this homicide occurred. Uh, coincidentally, I've been asked to pass along that the San Jose Police Department are currently looking for Passy's younger brother, Yuwada Sony Passy, who is currently wanted on a no bail homicide warrant. Anyone with information regarding that case or the whereabouts of Mr. Passy's brother is urged to contact the San Jose Police Department. Now, obviously I can't tell you how proud I am of the staff and detectives here who worked this case. Um, it is an 18 month long investigation. And I think not too long ago, we were standing here in front of you regarding an investigation um, of a case, uh, an attempted murder case that took place in 1989. Uh, these types of acts will not be tolerated in the city of San Mateo. Uh, they will be investigated and will be, continue to be investigated until we are able to solve them. I think this is one example of the diligence and commitment of our investigators and staff here at the San Mateo Police Department, and I'd like to thank each and every one of them. <clears throat> in addition to thanking all of our amazing detectives for their efforts, I'd especially like to thank Senior Detective Nick Morsilli, uh, who's here with us today, for his unwavering work in solving this case. Um, we, we also can confirm that uh, in December of 2000, or December of last year, or December of 2019, or two, I'm sorry, December of 2020. Uh, there was a homicide at the Wells Fargo Bank over near the Hillsdale Shopping Center, um, and we can confirm that uh, we have no information that links these two cases together. And the only reason I mention that is there's been some speculation on social media, and we've received some inquiries as to whether there's a connection between those two cases. Um, finally, we'd like to extend our appreciation to the San Mateo County District Attorney's Office for their assistance. Uh, we couldn't have taken these two individuals into custody without the help of the Charlotte Mecklenburg Police Department, Special Investigations Bureau, Violent Criminal Apprehension Team, uh, the U.S. Secret Service in Charlotte, um, special agents of the FBI uh, with the Honolulu Division, uh, Criminal Enterprise Squad. These law enforcement collaborations allow us to work together to capture our most dangerous criminals and make sure that uh, they face the justice system. We thank them for all the risk they took and their willingness to assist us. Uh, I'm going to uh, open it up to questions. Um, I'm going to ask the gentlemen behind me who were involved in, in working the case to to address most of those questions unless there's something I can answer for you. But that concludes our, our update this morning. Thank you for being here. Um, so you mentioned that um, it was in connection to a fire that killed an elderly woman. Why do they think that uh, the man, um, Mosaki, was involved with the uh, alleged crime? Sure. Um, I can't speak to the suspect in this case, why they thought that. Yeah. Um, but we do believe that played a role in the motive for this most current homicide. Okay. 
Can you say it by your name? Yeah, it's Nick, N-I-C-K. My last name is Morsilli, M-O-R-S-I-L-L-I. -L -L -I. And your title? Uh, senior detective. Can you share um, uh, what, what turned the case? Uh, 18 months. Uh, it took a long time. Uh, our entire investigations bureau played a role in this. Um, and uh, a number of little clues kept us kind of down the, uh, the path. Uh, so there was not one individual thing um, other than 18 months of not giving up um, and staying on the case. Were you on them pretty quickly? And you just had to wait for uh, other evidence? So there are uh, logistical issues and difficulties with arresting people specifically out of state. Um, we identified these two people uh, not early on. Uh, it took almost the entire 18 months for us to identify them as the suspects and gather enough evidence to obtain an arrest warrant. And then the last portion of this was the logistical portion, which is finding and arresting them out of state. Um. The, the son that was shot, was he targeted at all or was this just an accident that he was also shot? We don't have any information that he was the target of the assault. Okay. Um, do you have any updates on the Wells Fargo case that was mentioned? I do not. Uh, I'm not the lead investigator, uh, but like the chief said, uh, these two cases uh, are not related. We have zero evidence showing them to be related. Um, have you recovered any weapons or any um, evidence of any sort? So it's an open investigation and we're, we're still continuing with it. Um, so I'm going to reserve uh, to answer that one. Um, but we have, we have gathered evidence during their arrests mm -hmm. um, and I'll leave it at that. Do you have any additional suspects or people that you are um, investigating further? Uh, the investigative process is continuing, uh, but we believe we've arrested the two suspects responsible for this crime. Um, that case was from February 19th of 2019. Um, it's it has recently adjudicated through the court process. Uh, I think last week or the week before, uh, an individual pled guilty to that crime. Uh, beyond that, I don't have any additional updates. Have you spoken with family at all about uh, the case and have you kept them updated throughout uh, the 18 months about uh, what's been happening? Yes to both. Uh, so we've remained in constant communication uh, with the victim's widow uh, and I was able to speak with her yesterday uh, shortly after the suspect, suspects were arrested. Uh, what was her mood like? You know, was she relieved? Um, you know, how was she feeling overall after the case has been solved? Um, I think it's fair to say that she was relieved uh, and emotional um, but in regards to um, she didn't share anything that she would like me to pass along today. Okay. And how long would it take to get everybody over here? Sure, uh, there's an extradition process in place. Um, typically that takes anywhere between 30 to 90 days. And that's handled through our Sheriff's Department here in San Mateo County and the respective Sheriff's Departments both in North Carolina and in uh, Hawaii. Um. Do you have any information about, um, you know, just the, um, you know, where they've been living over the last 18 months? Has it mainly been here in the Bay Area at their residences here, or they, did they immediately go to Charlotte and Hawaii? The investigation revealed that they, um, each of them split their time. Uh, so they remain tied to the Bay Area here, uh, as well as where we ultimately found them in Hawaii and in North Carolina. So you had, uh, Great detective work. Was there help from the public along the way too? Uh, yes. The the day of, uh, the neighbors in the neighborhood uh, were very helpful, and they they started us all along this long path. It did take a long time, um, and then we were, San Mateo PD did receive a number of anonymous tips uh, through both our tip line and phone calls uh, that aided us in our investigation. Um, you mentioned that it was a possible retaliation because of the fire. Do you expect any, you know, further retaliation or has there been any further retaliation for, you know, some of these incidents that have gone on over the last 18 months? I don't, I don't, we don't have any information right now that we would um, suspect anything else is going to continue. We're, we're hopeful that this arrest uh, and the show of this arrest and showing how far San Mateo Police Department will go to get justice for its citizens is enough to, to stop any type of retaliation.
just a quick update on the, the as far as the Wells Fargo case, both those suspects are in custody, so that case has okay. also been unsolved. And then, as Detect, uh, Detective Morsilli mentioned, this is an ongoing and active investigation, so we would encourage 